flow riders and welcome to the flow oh we did it you know i got to mention that our last episode we ticked off episode 25 so we fully you know wrap 20. i think we did I don't know what the mark is, but we did a quarter century of them. So let's call it, <laughs> let's call it a congratulations to the flow riders and to ourselves and to Luis and Caleb and our whole team who helps us put this thing Woo-hoo! together, moderators, the whole nine yard, Mr. Paul, the wonderful. I had a hilarious thing playing around with AI and I told AI, like, what does a stressed out moderator look like? And I got the perfect picture. <laughs> it is the most wonderful picture. AI at its best. <laughs> it was so yeah, good. It was uh, today is 27. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, I think we're actually, t- we're a little bit past that. We're like, we're in, yeah, we're on our way to 50. We're on our way. Maybe that I just didn't mention it. Anyway, I want to say congratulations to us because it's a big deal. Like a lot of people don't realize that, you know, we talk about the pod fade and yes, it's real. And it's it's fun though. This has been, I think if I could do nothing else, I like to rewind everybody's brain and tell them if you're going to start your podcast, make sure you know your why. Well, we kind of have our why figured out. And then so it's easier to just continue to march without a problem. Yep. And so I think that's a super important thing. Make sure you lock it down. While we're passing out flowers, and introducing Katie. Hey everyone, I'm Katie. <laughs> the VHS club is the sauce. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank it you. is so fun. good. <laughs> you guys are freaking incredible. I watched freaking Can't Harley Wait on Sunday. I did too. Went- I did too. And you know what is like ironic and hilarious is that last episode you were saying you gave Natalie and I the awesome suggestion of sitting down and recording a whole bunch of like just in case clips that we could play, you know, in case something happened. Well, hilariously, so we invited Doc onto the show on Thursday. Hilariously, Natalie is not able to join Thursday. And I was like, oh, if only I'd recorded those. I was like, you know what? All good because Doc's going to be there. So it's we're taking the flow on location Thursday night. We're going to be talking about movies instead of podcasting. But yeah, I have that next step on my list. I was like, all right, Nat, now we really need to do this because inevitably we're going we're gonna to have moments where one or both of us aren't going to be able to be on. But it's been so fun. And I Again, I, you know, it's been something we've been talking about for forever. And based on this show, we're like, we're just going to start. So if you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know, I don't know if I should add video. I don't know if I should start this podcast thing. Just start. You have a why in your head. Just do it. It's so good. Gang, I highly suggest you watch the VHS Club, especially if you enjoy movies the way that we do. It was very impressive. And I just like watching it because... I remember Katie in her first podcasting endeavors ever, even the first couple episodes of this, and then watching her just run that show like a boss and still have a fantastic time doing it. It doesn't take that long. Like we literally started the flow in August. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then yeah. so we're, we're already here in February and now Katie can run the show by herself without any problems. And it is quite amazing. So yes, Paul, give Paul the link. And then we're good. it's funny to have Paul. <laughs> give Paul the link. Nope. Nope. <laughs> if you do want to follow along, the link is just youtube.com slash at sign the VHS club. So good. So good. Anyway. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's get started. What are we talking about this week, Kate? I know, Doc's like, where are we, what are we even doing today? What's our, what's our topic for today? Well, I'm really, really excited because we now have, we have today, next week, and the week after already planned out. So we're encountering a little bit of a theme here. So today we're going to talk about repurposing, how you take everything that you're doing in recording your podcast or live streaming your podcast, how you get it out into all of the different places. But stay tuned, because if you like this episode, we are bringing Harmony, I believe it's Harmony, on from Descript yes. in two weeks. I don't. I know that that's her name. I just don't know for sure if it's her or if it's going to be Mickey or someone else on the team. But the team from Descript is going to join us in two weeks. And then next week, we're going to bring on some special guest friends of mine who just started their podcast to walk through their entire workflow and how they're repurposing and how they're doing everything. So we're in a, we're in a like full flow repurposing theme. But today we're just going to talk about what is repurposing, why you should be doing it and how to do it. Okay. So I have an important thing to tell you. If you are recording your podcast with Ecamm, as you should, (laughs) one of the (laughs) things that we're going to give you, if you checked all the right boxes, we have tutorials, don't sweat it. You will get basically an isolated recording of your video in your mic and then your guest video and your guest mic. 
and you can just throw them in any number of apps to do a edit, right? So particularly, I'm a Final Cut guy. Some people are going to be, um, what's that thing called? The painter guy, Da Vinci. You might be Premiere. <laughs> Premier um, you could, it yeah. would be extremely difficult and time consuming, but you could do it in like CapCut or InShot. The only reason why it'd be difficult and time consuming is they're not really designed for longer form edits. They're designed for short form edits. So they will work, but they would be harder. In fact, you could do it in iMovie. You just won't have as much control over your audio and things. So I have to give two pointers. Number one, if you're going to start from scratch and you've never edited anything, yes, it's going to sound scary, but just go straight to Final Cut. Go straight to Final Cut. Go to search for apple.com and then search for Final Cut Education Bundle and just type it in and you can get Final Cut and Logic and Motion and Center Stage for 199 bucks. And Apple really doesn't care that you're not really in college. <laughs> like, they don't really care. And honestly, they should just change it. I really wish they would just change it so that people don't have to feel Uji about it. Cause I know some people do feel Uji about it, but I know from when I worked there, we never checked. When people came in and say, Hey, I'm buying this. I'm a college student. Okay. Whatever. It's the time it takes to do all of the checking is obnoxious. Right. And so one of the things like I was mentioning on a podcast yesterday, I was on office hour global and I was stating that when your security is so tight that it interferes with the person's audio jungle ability to find the audio jungle clip that their audio jungle listening for. It's a waste of energy to the people who paid already yeah. and really want to just hear your thing. So Apple doesn't care. Don't feel bad about it until they close that loop, which they could have closed 10 years ago, but they haven't. Yeah. So they, that proves me they don't care. Just get that, go straight to Final Cut. Just skip everything else. Yeah, and if you need help figuring out Final Cut, I can help you, Tom can help you. I got a whole, Discord server of friends who can help you learn how to use Final Cut. Just uh, iMovie is going to be a waste of time. I just want to put that in your head. And then if you're using Ecamm, the last thing is as you're doing your recording and you come across something glorious that you know you want, just press M on your keyboard M. or yep. put an M button M button on your stream deck so that way you can have markers and it'll make your job easier. Yeah, it really does. And I would say too that, and here, fun, fun story. So Two weeks ago, I think it was, I was a guest on a podcast. I was using Ecamm coming in. They're recording on Zoom. But I thought, you know, what the heck? I'll record on my end because always be recording. It's a smart, <laughs> it's a smart move to make. And at the end of the podcast, I had hit M. Everything that I said that I thought would be really fun. I had the video captured. I literally grabbed that video clip. I dragged it into Descript, pulled up the transcript, pulled up the video. I clipped it down to a short amount. It took me maybe 20 minutes max to find like, you know, a 30 second or 90 second clip, drag that into Instagram as a reel, added some captions and some cute things, tag them. And I was promoting their podcast before they even finished editing it. I was like, this drops on Sunday. This was so much fun, but it was so easy. And it gave me that extra video. I was able to send my video over to them and, you know, let them know that I had everything all set to go as an extra. So whether it's your podcast or you're a guest on a podcast, be a great guest, record the video. You might use it in repurposing and in, you know, being able to help support the podcast that you're on. So pro tip on my end, but I felt so proud of myself. And it was one of those moments where I was like, why haven't I been doing this all along? And I don't really know why, but it's one of those things that I think is super important. Man, that is so cool. I like the fact that you say you can promote it before they get a chance to do it. I think that is really incredible because <laughs> Like, and yeah, so people, some people are going to balk like, oh, I can't really afford the script. And guess what? There's other tools out there for you yeah. right now. Uh, OpenAI has something called Whisper. Whisper will help you transcribe. So the script is better, but Whisper works, right? Even if you just had to take the YouTube description down. Okay. Like this is crazy, but let me just explain it, right? Sometimes free just means you got to spend more time. Paid means it's going to be faster. Exactly. Free. Free. It's your time. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You either, you either have money or you have time. That's always the problem, right? So in theory, you can record your episode, put it on YouTube as private. Like I don't even care. I don't want anybody to see it. YouTube will transcribe it. You can pull down a YouTube transcription and open it up in your favorite editor and fix it. Right. Yeah. It's going to take you about an hour to fix it. <laughs> so, I mean, buy the script. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 once you fix it, here's a cheat code. You take that, 
finished transcription, whether it's done with the script or Otter or Rev or Whisper, whoever transcribed it, even exactly. if you had your kid transcribe it for you, take the transcription, drop it in the chat GPT and say, generate me a couple highlights out of this, right? Yep. It's going to give you scripts. I need a couple 30 second highlights out of this straight from the transcription. You're going to take that and match it to the video. Yep. I think you will be successful at repurposing if you go into recording or streaming with the intention to repurpose. So, you know, as Doc and I are talking right now, I'm very aware because I'm the one who is pulling that transcript and working into scripts throughout this week for our release next week. I'm aware of like, what are those three sound bites that we're gonna get out and turn into video clips? You know, what brilliant thing is Doc saying? <laughs> I've got my M ready. I've got my thought ready to be able to get that out later. And what and what form is that gonna take? Is that gonna be a video clip? Is it gonna be an audiogram? Is it gonna be just a typed out quote we're sharing out through Twitter or somewhere else? Is it gonna be a blog article? I be very aware of what different options you have for repurposing and be thinking about that as you're creating and planning out your content and not just waiting until the video is done and then being like, okay, how do I repurpose this? You need to be setting that level of intention going in. Oh, okay. So here we go, people. I'm going to break this flow for a second, but this flow is to show you how to flow in an actual flow. Meta. Katie Jess, <laughs> in, in probably about a minute's time, Katie covered a bunch of very important points, but I know that's a good clip. And maybe I'm worried that clip is slightly longer than a minute. So let me fix the clip right now. All right, Katie. I just want to double back and repeat what you just said. So you're saying some of the best repurposed elements out of a podcast can be an audiogram, a social media post, a blog post. And what were the other couple that you came up on? A quote in a social post. A, uh, I think you said them all. Now I'm ruining your clip. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> but that's okay. I actually knew what they were, so maybe I would just finish them. But yeah. know that you can, if you have something that you might want to be able to reuse, intentionally stop and reiterate that section, right? Mm -hmm. Or a lot of times you'll hear us host say, hey, oh, that was super dope. Can you run that back again? Now I'm pressing the button, right? And then when I go to edit, I'll take the question and the run back and stick it together. The yeah. reason why you have them run it back, they already said it. They probably know it can say it again quicker the second time. You know what I mean? Except if they're Katie. <laughs> Let you, throw, let you throw Katie for a loop. So you can completely stop in the middle and reiterate something important to make sure that they got them again, right? And nobody's going to notice, nobody's going to care because you're still giving them information and somebody missed it the first time you said it. So repeating it is not that big a deal. So what Katie said is correct. Do them with intentionality. You will make your job a heck of a lot easier. And Kayla will send you nasty text messages like, I need you guys to give me more clips from the show. <laughs> That's not what Caleb sounds like. All right. We should, though, actually, on that note, we should back up for anyone that is new to this podcast or is new to content marketing or video marketing in general and talk through a little bit about what repurposing is. So we just went through them really quickly, but the act of repurposing is taking pieces of content that either are from the long form content you're creating, like this podcast episode, or are associated or around the long form content that you're creating to use to promote your podcast or show or to grow your audience, but really they're a marketing tool to get people back, right? So Think of it as all of the different ways that you can reach people in the spots that they are at. So this is any of the social platforms and specific content you can create for those. That's a blog post or things you can put on your website. That's sending out an email. What else, Doc? There's, I think that's social platforms, emails, blog. Uh, yeah, hello, I mean tripwires. You can use it to build tripwires, right? So, all right, hold on. First of all, I got to back this up because Katie's going to say it. See, I'm glad you're here, Katie, because in my head, like, oh, what is repurposing? I don't know. Repurposing. Like, it's in the word, bro. Like, what else do you mean? <laughs> like, this is just me. And then there's people that get really frustrated because, you know, they're afraid to take those leaps. It's not that they can. It's an obvious statement. Like, what is water? It's water. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe the fear is stopping you from hearing what it actually is. Right? Yeah. So... I would have completely been like, okay, I know you know what repurposing is because it's just like you take an old t-shirt and when you're done, you turn it into a rag to clean the stove. I repurpose yeah. in the story, right? But yeah. 
Now I forgot the word that I had to reiterate because I just said one that was probably a term of art. Oh, I know what I said. I said tripwire. Oh, tripwire. Yeah. A, a tripwire is a download or a behind the scenes or something that yep. you get people yep. to sign up to your email list in order to get. Right. Yep. So I need the documentation for the challenge of Ecamm that just happens featuring Salisbury Adrian. Okay. Go to this link and put in your email address and we'll send it to you. Yeah. Tripwire. Yeah, right. and see, and that's actually a really good point to highlight for a couple of reasons. One, it's really smart to grow your audience. But two, that's a piece of content that you technically are not repurposing. You are not taking that piece of content and putting it out in a different way or putting out into a different place. You're actually withholding that content from your episode or from your main content or it's additive but you are giving it as an extra for those who are able to or want to register or sign up or give you some information. I think people sometimes forget that in the repurposing. They're like, okay, well, repurposing, I need to clip up my videos or I need to clip up my audio or I need to grab those sound bites or those quotes. But there's also things like you said, like anything that is extra content all around it, or maybe it's even just a summary or a social post on LinkedIn where you say what you learned from hosting that episode or from talking yeah. with that guest, which isn't from the episode itself, but is kind of that additive around, you know, around the episode, around the main content. And you can, you can build entire things around the product too. Yeah. So for instance, it would be smart of us to basically record one of these episodes. We're going to edit this right after, and it's going to be, you come into this room that you signed up for, mm -hmm. and then yeah. you will watch Louise, Katie, and I go through editing the show, like all of the steps that are involved. And you're going to watch exactly how to edit a particular type of show. Yeah. Or for someone, someone like Rich, who's doing a promotion podcast, and he's explaining to people like how to buy, you know, this new special titanium mug with the Ecamm logo, and he's promoting or not promoting, but explaining that this is a hot ticket item right now, he could do an after show where he actually shows how to go in Illustrator and properly set up the artwork, pull the right CMK colors, make sure that your clients are giving you all the pertinent information, realizing that on a cylinder, circles look oblong, even though they're not, so it's an optical illusion. So there's a calculation that you have to do in order to, well, it depends on the size, right? It's a calculation you do, radius, circumference, and then you squish the logo on purpose and it looks normal to the eye after the fact. Like he could explain all of that in the behind the scenes show that is good for building that audience or building that email list or something of that nature. Like, so now you're putting some value behind your repurpose, but we've watched people turn their whole entire podcast into a book. That's to me is the ultimate repurpose. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and again, and a book then that they could sell through an Amazon live stream, right? So there are tons and tons of opportunities out there. And the way that you're going to learn what works best for you is going and listening and watching and seeing what other people are doing and taking down some of those ideas, asking questions, being part of a community like you are here as part of the flow riders, you know, certainly you can always ask questions and figure out what others are doing or what we're doing. But and yeah, and then just, you know, seeing what works for you as a consumer. What are the things where you've given your email ad address out to what are the podcasts that you've subscribed to? What are the shows that you show up to? Why? <laughs> what is it about those shows that's working and how have they reached you? How did you find us? Is it because you were part of the Ecamm fam and we were talking about it in the community? Is it that we advertised on another show? Was it a post on Instagram or on Facebook? You got to really think those things through so that you can test and try and figure out what works best for you. But there's tons of options out there. So again, like everything, start with one or two get really good at that, figure out what works best, and then add more things on. If you sit and say like every single podcast episode, I'm going to put it in these 17 different spots and I'm going to do all of this stuff. Great. If you have the time to do it, you probably don't. And you probably shouldn't start off with that many things. You should find the couple of things that work best and the couple of spaces that work best for your audience or who you're trying to reach. Well, there you go. You know, I think you're right. One of the things and I think it's a super good point is that people will try to do all of them. And in the beginning, you should probably add one repurposed thing at a time until you get to the requisite amount that you need. Okay. So like if you add them all at a time, it's going to seem daunting and impossible. Then you're going to freak yourself out. You're going to have more whelm than you wanted for. <laughs> 
it, nobody has ever said I am perfectly whelmed. You're either over or under. Like, true. what is perfectly whelmed? Happy. <laughs> whelmed. Whelmed is happy. It should be under happy or over happy. You have to use all of the words if you're going to use them. And right now, people don't even say underwhelmed anymore. Everybody is overwhelmed. Just be whelmed, people. Anyway, let me get off my box. <laughs> so you're going to want to be able to think about this, right? So we're going to talk about intentionality for a second, because I think what Katie is saying is correct. You should start with one. So right now, it's just me. Maybe I'm, you know, biased as a YouTube coach. Turn it into YouTube short. <laughs> you want to turn them into YouTube shorts. And so if you know that you only have 60 seconds for a short, then you're going to intentionally put in places for a short to come out. Now, let's say you have on an amazing guest and the guest is talking about something super important. And when you go to edit that short at minute 60, they're not there, not minute second 60, but there was a hooking type element at second 37. Stop it right there. Stop it at the hook. And they'd be like, shoo, shoo, shoo. see the full episode here. <laughs> that's how you promote it or never miss out on these again come to the live recordings <laughs> we're going to do a meetup in some random city and make sure you come and check us out and this guest is going to be there <laughs> this is how you do it right so think about that there's public sharing tools out there you can take the deck from your show the best points and put them on many public sharing tools like slide is an old school one but there's plenty of them out there so you can do things like that and like you said generate audiograms those are the three two those are a couple of the ones i think are super amazing right now and i don't really listen to it as much anymore but i used to always hear really good ones on flash brief if you have that lady that begins with a that comes from the amazon place she used to come on in the morning when you fire up the coffee pot. So you would go this morning on your flash briefing. And then, you know, you would hear clips from your favorite podcast on there. So, you know, some people still listen to that and I don't as much anymore, but I mean, there's so many things you can do with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, it comes down to where your audience lives and what works best for you. So for us, for this show right now, we live record, as we said a bajillion times here, we live record here on YouTube every single week 12 p.m eastern we go for about an hour when we oh, luis is remote producing it for us so both doc and i are calling in as interview guests through ecamm so luis has all of those files as doc said at the top of this episode all of the isolated files he's got my video doc's video each of our audios and then he's got the whole thing mixed and then doc and i are also recording on our end so we can send those files over so when the show is over luis gets all of the files that he needs and he starts the editing process but while he's doing that, we're working on what the next week's episode is, and we are taking past clips from past episodes that we've already clipped, and we're sending those through to different social platforms, and we're talking and generating additional content. When that episode is done being edited, typically Friday or sometimes Monday morning, but it comes back through and then, no, no offense to Luis who's busy. It comes back through and I throw, I literally throw that video clip, right? The whole video episode right into Descript generates the entire transcript. And then while I am going through and just checking to make sure the transcript looks good and there's no weird things or little things I need to tweak or change, I can read and very easily identify where those clips were that I remember from this episode. It also helps me remember the main points from the episode. I jot down some notes. I clip three or four different clips. I grab the transcripts. Most of that work is really fast and fairly easy, but it helps create a ton of content that then we can send back out in different places. It's become a really easy process. At one point we did also do blog posts, which I'd like to get back to. You know, we've done some PDF downloads, which I'd like to get back to, but right now we're in a state where this is a really easy process for any of us to pick up and make sure that we get each episode out. And it really, it generates enough content that we have an audience that we're growing each and every single week and people understand what our topics are. And we have those sound bites for people that don't wanna watch the entire episode, don't wanna listen to the entire episode, but can catch the important things that resonate with them. It works right now. The whole process is a week long from when we record to when we officially release, but really the work in there is probably only an hour or two, you know, split between three or four of us, depending on who's working on it that week. So it's a sustainable process that gets us into the habit 
of thinking about it a different way. So we know what topics we're covering. We know how to sum up and reiterate our episode in, in social posts and summaries. We have our video clips. We have our transcript that we can use for closed captioning and a bunch of other places. And it's all a pretty easy, seamless, repeatable process. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you said there that are super dope. <clears throat> you drop it into the script. Okay, and then in the description, there is a soliloquy of just awesomeness that comes out. You can grab the cursor, start in the first word, highlight it to the last word, and then copy that. Paste that into a new composition. It will pick up the text, the audio, and the video. Yep, so there's your video clip, done. And drop it into a new composition, completely done if you touch nothing else. Just turn the captions on so that they run across the bottom, you know, like a good click, and then you're square. Now, you can go in and grab B-roll or, you know, pictures and things to support that. And it's very easy to divide that up. If you want it to be marker oriented, you just put in a little slash marks about it up. I mean, repurposing in Descript is just, again, dope. Now. The other thing that you can do, and I said this before, I'm just going to reiterate it so nobody misses this, take the entire transcript and then go to chat.openai.com. I, I want to start doing this. This will be fun. Yeah. And then you can say, they GPT, based off the learning outcomes of X, please summarize the above, right? Or help. here's a one that I use all the time. Help me write an informative, engaging, blah, 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 about the above, mm -hmm. right? It will formulate things for you in a manner that makes sense. So now you have this summary. You can take that summary and go, in case you missed it, right? And you can give it back to the script. And if you're on the pro plan, you can say, hey, the script, I want you to be me, read this out, because it's only gonna be short. And it will read it out in your own voice, or close to it, and then if you put enough noise in, <laughs> you don't even have to reread it. If you're good like me and you can read it in one take, knock yourself out. If you cannot, hey, no problem. The script will make it for you and then spit it back out. And now you can put that in case you missed it as a social media clip so that people wanna go back and hear that particular episode. So when you hear in your podcast where they highlight another episode or a different podcast or your friend's podcast that you were a guest on, Hello, super simple nowadays, you kind of got zero excuses. If you don't want it to be your voice, there's free tools out there with, that will convert it into Samuel L. Jackson. Like, I mean, you'd be like, hey, mother, if you didn't listen to the podcast this week, then, you know, like, come on. Like, you, this, the excuses are over, fam. It is way too easy to do this now. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So just if you just took your transcript, no matter where you got it from, and you threw it at the AI, the AI can summarize it for you, make social media posts for you, make tweets for you, make LinkedIn posts for you, make Facebook posts for you, make Pinterest posts for you. Like, who got an excuse for me? Please throw it at me so that I can just light it up. Yeah. And they, if people have been, you have all been asking us about, you know, what is the future of AI? How as content creators and podcasters and video people are, you know, should we be using AI? This is a great start right here. So use it to streamline your process, to create efficiencies for you. You've already worked hard on the actual podcast episode. So yeah, like use it, use it to create all of these repurposing either your process or the actual content itself or a little bit of both. I think it's really super smart and it's a great way to get familiar with it in a way that's not scary at all. Like you, it's not like it's doing the podcast for you. It's not taking over your job. It's not doing these things that are potentially, you know, potentially intimidating. You're using it to help you. And if it doesn't work out the way you want it to don't post it, but at least you've tried and you're getting used to using it more. Yeah, virtual assistant AI. <laughs> Absolutely, Doc. I hate to be this person, but I think it's important that if you get into the creator mode, once you become a creator, you have to eliminate the destruction words from your vocabulary. Um, because they cause you to think about stuff that's just not real, right? So, like you said, yeah, I can't take anybody's job. It's not going to. Yeah. <laughs> if anything is going to make people's job better, it will help other people develop jobs and it will help 
the people above that just do better at what they already know how to do. Everybody who's been cruising, you're going to get caught. It just is what it is. So here's your chance to reiterate and like fix yourself and start all over. So yeah, it's like, it's not going to really, really bother any jobs. I think it's just funny that the timing of AI blowing up at the same time, big tech just had a sweep of them over hiring. That's where it comes from. And it looks a little scary, but that's, they're not even related. So if anything to creators right now, you should be really, really doubling and tripling down in your creativity because a whole bunch of extremely skilled people just got released and a lot of them don't want to go back to corporate. So when they start doing a, a podcast or a creation in your lane with all of the skills they have, you're in trouble. <laughs> Today's public service announcement has been brought to you by Doc. Don't panic. People are coming for your jobs. <laughs> no, I'm not, that's not your job. That's your, for most people, it's your their passion, hobby. Yeah. They're, okay. they're not doing it right. But there's your opportunity to realize if anything, now is the time to be honing your skills and stop cruising because a whole bunch of really, really skillful people just got released into the water. If you're a, a goldfish and a whole bunch of sharks just all of a sudden came into the pond, you better shark up real quick. All right. So one other thing that I wanted to make sure that we covered in, in here is we did it. And maybe without even realizing that we did it, we did it. Another good repurposing outcome is your highlight show or your yeah. mailbag show. Your yeah. mailbag shows are great. And how you record a mailbag show without recording a mailbag show, every time you get a good question that comes in via email or comment or whatever, just record that. Yep. And it doesn't matter that your clothes change. Nobody's paying attention to that. They're paying attention to the question and the answer. Okay. So when you get one, always be recording. Katie has explained this always to you. Always be recording. ABR. <laughs> Pop into your ECM setup and be like, hey, got a wonderful question from Paul Kelly from the chat today. Paul Kelly wants to know what is your favorite podcast platform picks and your recommendations? Paul, it's super simple. It's Captivate and none other. I would really like to say that this is on par and this is on par and this is on par because we do like to work in the world of equality and equilibrium. But no, Captivate smokes all of those dudes in fresh, easy wides. So if you want my honest opinion, I'm going to say Captivate above all other. I really can't even think why I would use anything else at the moment. Your opinions may vary, but here's, that's my answer. So here we go. And we just keep that. Okay. And then one time something's going to come up, like we're going to both be at NAB and we can't do a flow show. Luis could take the super cut of all of us video answering questions and throw that together as the mailbag episode for the week. Katie and I could do an introduction in the lobby and be like, hey, this is Dr. Katie. We are at the Sheraton Renaissance Las Vegas and we can't blah, blah, blah. So enjoy the mailbag episode. Make sure you get your emails into us at flow at, at, at ecam.com so that the next time we do a mailbag episode, maybe we'll get your question on there. Boom done Love or we it. just do a highlight reel right yep. we did this uh first week of january right these are the things that we learned through the first 20 some odd episodes of doing the flow right so you're basically repurposing because you're going back and talking about what you already covered and those episodes always do really well in almost every podcast i ever listened to they tend to be some of the better ones because they're interactive you see so don't forget that version of repurposing as well yeah it's a really big topic. It's a really big word. <laughs> there's a lot of things that fall under it. And really in the end, there's no right and wrong. The whole goal behind it is to make the entire process easier for you to be able to reach as many people as possible. So yay you, you started a podcast, you're killing it, you're out there, you're doing a really great job. Who are the people that you want to reach? Where are they? And how can you put little breadcrumbs out in all of those spaces to pull people back to your gingerbread house of awesomeness. <laughs> so figure out what those spaces are and what are the pieces of content that make sense on those places and start building into your podcast production plan, PPP, a way to reach those people with those breadcrumbs. So if you're, all your people are on TikTok, for example, then you know maybe at the beginning of every episode recording or live stream, you grab a vertical video that is like, yeah, we're behind the scenes doing our sound check before this episode. We're gonna be talking all about repurposing content. Doc and I are having a great time. We can't wait to see you here live. You wanna find out our three pro tips. Here are two, catch the third by joining us live on this episode. Grab that video, drag that over to TikTok and pull people over that way. Think You really just need to think through what works best for you and build on it as you go. But there's no 
wrong. Every little tiny piece of content that leads back to your big piece of content is a repurposing win, <laughs> whatever that is. That is the clip, right? Everything is content, everything is content, right? So <laughs> here's a prime example, right? Today was a good, now of course she was busy and probably didn't think about it. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't have thought about it either. But if you're thinking like this all the time, or you put yourself in the mindset to think about it all the time, Katie could have been like, get ready to go do the flow. But today I can't do it in office. I gotta be home because the little fox is sick, boom stop right it's just a quick thing she's running to the car and you, you know she jumps in and you hear the vroom, 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 and then start right so then <laughs> yeah. she goes to the ecamp office she busted hey kim i like have the phone in her hand doesn't even matter if she's looking at herself or looking at the table hey kim can't stay gotta grab this equipment and take it home and then you just see a shot next of the camera the microphone the tripod requisite cables and you see the arm just go phew. and then moms always have that fold up bag in the purse they just unfold it and then <laughs> drop everything in the bag. It's true, the Mary Poppins bag, yeah. The Mary Poppins bag, right? And then you run back to the house, you get everything set up, and the next shot is basically the phone on the table, and you plop in, boom, okay, now I set up the studio in the house, I'm getting ready to record the flow. Be ready to grab your equipment and remove it at any time and know how to set it back up. Darn it, that would have been good, Doc. I missed that opportunity. Maybe I'll have to fake it later, and then all of you, you have will be like, You have two kids, no. winner. One of them will be sick again. Now you know. Exactly, <laughs> like, like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Actually, the one will get the other one sick, and so yeah, the next opportunity. Truth. Just know that you can throw those type of things together because somebody else is in your same position where they're going to have to move studio because of construction or neighbors or dog or, you know, mother-in-law came to visit, whatever the case may be. And that is a good clip, right? That is a good BTS clip, right? So those are the type of things that you can do. And I just realized we had a customer reach out to us this week, talk about a dope repurposing opportunity. A customer reached out this week and they didn't know how to move their eCam from their current computer to their new computer. And, you know, we were saying, oh, just do this, this, and this. But then it just dawned on me, hello, I got a brand new one sitting right here. <laughs> You're like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> I did already move everything over, but I can just delete it and do it again, <laughs> right? And then this time, I'll make sure to record that process so that way everybody will know you just save your profiles and you're good to go basically. But if you want to take it more granularly, I can give all those steps. And I did already make a video about where you should be keeping your Ecamm assets and things like that. So those are all really good sort of repurposed capabilities, right? And everything is content. And so, yeah, it will be really, really cool that now when people are saying, hey, what's the best way to do a podcast? What I'm seeing happening in our community is community members are going, oh, if you're going to do a podcast with Ecamm, you should be watching The Flow. And I just go, <laughs> what? yeah. Thank you guys. Hercules is working, <laughs> you know? So there you go. And don't be afraid to, and we're doing this on our end, but don't be afraid to go back. If you've been podcasting for a while and you've been video podcasting for a while, then you have a ton of amazing content out there. There's nothing stopping you from going back through some of your original episodes, you know, writing down or finding what those fun moments are. Maybe it's like moments where something crazy or silly happened and you want to stitch those together into a fun little trailer video. Just put music behind it or like, you know, or find brilliant moments or fun guests that you've had on. There's potential to be continuously going back through your database of past clips and past episodes and pulling back out those nuggets because your audience is always growing. So people may not have seen those original episodes. Maybe they didn't binge watch or binge listen to all of them. And those moments in the back catalog are equally important. And you can keep pulling those out and using them in tons of different ways for promo videos and ads and all kinds of different content. So cool. So I'm excited for when we are going to be like going through the script with folks. Yeah. Two weeks, not next week, but the weekend. <laughs> and let's see, we got our poll in and these are the results. We asked the poll, are you repurposing your podcast? Okay. So yes was 45%. No, but I want to was 31%. Well, we're glad you came today and hopefully we sparked some of your fancy. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't have a podcast. Okay, let's get that started. Hey, yet. You're in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We, we should have added dot, 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 yet. Yeah. And then 0% said no. So, hey, we're we doing the work. We're doing <laughs> the work here. All right, gang. So, basically, 
repurposing is taking whatever you've created and finding creative ways to reuse that in a different platform other than the one you quote unquote created it for. It can be a myriad of things, right? It can absolutely be a myriad of things from again, blog posts, newsletters, podcasts, audiograms, video shorts, reels, TikToks. It's endless. Let's just put it endless. this way. The creativity <laughs> possibilities are endless. With that said, I want to go back and give you a word from our sponsor because I think it will really help you get to where you need to go. And that is Descript. You can say Descript, you can say Descript. They don't really care. And the script. The script. <laughs> the yeah. script. Yeah. You can drop it into Descript. And basically, you're going to take the video or the audio file that you've created and just going to turn it into a Word document. If you can read, you can edit. So you're going to be able to easily fix your ums and your ahs. You're going to be able to easily chop it up into chapters, turn it into the audiograms that we spoke about earlier. We didn't really explain what an audiogram is, but just go ahead and download your trial of the script and you'll be able to figure it out within seconds. You can generate really, really awesome clips. It's super intuitive. And to me, it's one of the fastest ways that people can edit. I are an editor. I edit really fast in things like Final Cut Pro and DaVinci and of, you know, those natures. I still do my base or what we used to call an offline edit. I do my offline edit in the script and it's amazing. And so we just got to give a shout out to them. We could not do this show without the script. <laughs> I would be completely underwater in full panic mode without it. It has made things so much faster for me because video editing is not my full-time job. I would love to learn more about it, but it's not something that I'm, it's not as high a priority as other things that I'm working on. So for me, it just makes it really fast and easy for me to at least be able to get those clips out there and keep uh, the show on schedule. And then we have other brilliant people around to help with those heavier edits, but it's a great, it's a great starting point. And if you are an amazing editor, it's a great additional tool to have to just make it really fast and easy to be able to find those moments really quickly and clip them up, whether it's audio or video or both and get them out into all the different spaces and places. There you go. So thanks to the script, we'll make sure the link is down in the description <laughs> not 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 related <laughs> not related we'll put it in the description or for the videos and we'll also put it in the show notes for those of you guys who listen to this on the audio but again big ups to the script and yeah super stoked so we're going to roll into question and answer mode if you want to make sure that you don't miss these opportunities we do record every tuesday live on youtube so you can slide by and come and check us out we're just ecam live on the YouTube box. You can find us here, watch live, bring your questions. You can also ask us questions on the flow, on the volley rather, which is quite amazing. And of course, you can always send us an email at flow at ecamm.com. That's it. That's it, Flow Riders. We did it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>